Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about hurricane screws and hurricane clips. Specifically for holding your trusses down to your double top plate on your walls. So what we're trying to do in this is to hold the trusses down to the top plate. That's because there's uplift load on these trusses. There's two ways of getting uplift load. The first one is wind blowing up at the side of the building and it, it's pushing up on the soffit and that's going to try and lift the trusses up under a heavy wind. The second is if you have wind blowing straight across over your roof, it's going to create a vacuum above the roof, just like an airplane wing. It's going to try and lift the roof off. So code requires that we put in fasteners that are specialized to hold these down. Now a lot of people use H25s or H1s. Uh, we use these hurricane screws. They do pretty much the same thing and they're a lot quicker. Also these make it easier for the drywall guys to finish that corner. There's less bumps, it's easier to screw into. So if you're putting in H1s or H25s, you just slide them up. You wanna make sure that there's no metal in this corner here. You want the drywallers to be able to slide their drywall in without hitting any metal. Then you're just going to take a positive placement nailer and nail through these holes. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Now for these truss screws, we just take them and we want to put them right on the edge of this plate here. And we want to line it right up with the truss dead center. And then we're going to drill in at a slight angle here. Now the reason we put it on this edge here is so that if there's a stud in the way, we can still keep that angle and stay consistent all the way down. The reason we put it at an angle is because that's what's required for the hold down capacity of this screw. We'll put it all the way in. We wanna make sure that it's flush or slightly inset. We don't want it to make a bump in the drywall. So we're gonna go ahead and put in a truss screw on all of these exterior walls here, everywhere the truss heel sits on the double top plate. So up behind me here, we, this isn't an exterior wall, but we're still going to put our truss screws all along this to make sure that we have our hold down on these trusses because they're taking a lot of wind up, uplift. Now the way to look at truss uplift is on the roof truss specs. So this is the sheet you'll get that shows permanent bracing and other stuff like that. So if you come down here, you can see the reactions, the bolded header there. You have the max uplift. So on this truss right here, AO2, the max uplift at 0.2, which you can see is right here on this heel, is 170 pounds. On 0.7, the other heel is 162 pounds. Now, those are smaller numbers, which is pretty common for what we do. Now, occasionally you'll get a girder truss or a larger truss that has a lot of roof square footage connected to one heel or two heels, one on each side. And since you have that wind hitting that roof, if it's, if it's a girder truss, you have a bunch of trusses hanging off of it. So all of those trusses, even though they're in a bracket, they're actually connected to just two heels on that girder. So you'll see in that reactions, the max uplift, that the, the force can be a lot more. So you, it's always, it's always good practice to double check that specs, those specs on the max uplift, because sometimes you can get numbers as much as 2,000 pounds of uplift. So you have to get a specialized bracket or specialized hanger to make sure that those girder heels are really well held down onto that wall. This is something that the building inspectors are not gonna catch, so it's your responsibility to get it. If you guys got any value out of this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we're doing an in-depth tutorial on every skill it takes to frame a quality house. 